Welcome to Association Chat, a podcast devoted to talking about all things associations, nonprofits, and the future for building communities. In a world where there's an association for everything, that gives us a lot to talk about. So let's get started with your host, Kiki Latalian. So this is a little bit different, um, a little bit different of an experience, association chat experience, but I really am excited because today I'm talking with Mina Dyack and Mina, um, she is doing some amazing things. Hi, Michael. Great to see you. Um, Mina is uh, working with associations, catalyzing entrepreneurship. And when I say working with, I mean, she founded this group that is focused on exploring entrepreneurship and its role with associations. And I have been really fascinated to find out more. Um, There's a live event that's taking place. The group is getting together in D.C. today. I was going to be there live and unfortunately got uh, derailed from my plans. But... Thanks to technology, we're here today and we're having this discussion anyway. And so, Mina, thank you so much for talking with me and um, basically telling the association chat world a little bit about this wonderful thing, this wonderful group that you've created. Um, Sure. Well, Kiki, thanks for having me. Um, I am really flattered. I always used to watch association chat, never thought I'd be on it. So thank you for inviting me. And um, yeah, you're right. What is this thing we have created? Um, I wouldn't take the credit for having created it. I started a few things, but I have a great community and we all collaborate to keep ACE or associations catalyze entrepreneurship going. So we started this group about a year and a half ago in January of 2018. Mm-hmm. And really it started with a conversation on one of the groups. We were talking about um, some kind of an issue in associations and our views on mission versus money, our desire to be entrepreneurial, what keeps us from being entrepreneurial. And um, it really resonated with me. And I said, instead of talking online through a community, why don't we all get together and talk about this face to face? And it just really took off from there. Everything fell in place. We as a group began to meet um, once a month, once every two months. Um, we talked about a whole range of issues facing associations, and we have had some fabulous conversations. I've met great people, um, and we re- um, we come from different functions across an association. We have uh, CEOs, we have people in membership and marketing and communications from really every side of an association, and that's the cool thing. And the one thing that ties us together is that we are all ready to think outside the box and we want to know how we can bring a fresh approach and a mindset to common challenges that we face. So we've been able to bring in some I guess, outside speakers. We've been talking to each other. And um, I know that I have certainly taken a lot of great ideas back to uh, work. I work for the American Public Power Association. I do their communications. I, I have been able to take a lot of fresh things to my own association and I hope others have as well. So uh, just a nice group of people to work with and a community to draw from. Oh, I love that. You know, and I, when I see some of the different events that are, are being held, the different topics that you guys are talking about, you know, it's always something that's that's interesting and something that I think is relevant to associations. But what is it that really, you know, the thing about groups getting together Um, It always sounds like a good idea at the very beginning. And then as things get more complicated, you know, a lot of times things sort of fall apart. What is it that keeps driving you and keeps driving the group to to continue to to come together? Has there ever been a point where you're like, oh, my gosh, this is more work than I thought it would be? Um, It's definitely work, but um, the results are so phenomenal that it's fun to keep it going. Um, And. I think we're just a great group when we have one conversation and we get together and we talk, let's say, uh, making better use of data and listening to your members. That was a recent topic a couple of months ago. Um, there's usually some some you know piece of that conversation which sparks off like a different line of thought. And you're like, oh, we need to talk about that. And 
let's dive more into this and let's examine something else more. So one thing really leads to another and um, that's kind of what's kept it going. Plus just the interaction with the group. Like I've had some great people who um, kind of a core group, but others who come in based on whether they're interested in the topic or not. We keep things really informal and simple, no subscriptions, no, <laughs> nothing. Like it's just really simple if you're coming, sign up and hey, it'd be nice if you show up. So we've um, had this great group and I think we've also, um, we've had some really great speakers. Um, I wouldn't call them speakers as in the sense that this, is, this has never been a one way, I'm gonna talk at you kind of thing. They, um, the people who sort of are leading out, lead us down a certain path of thinking. You know, they share their experiences and they kind of help to drive the conversation. So we've had some great people willing to speak to us and give up their time. Uh, another thing that has been important to me is if we as associations want to think entrepreneurially, we should just not be talking to each other. Let's hear from some real entrepreneurs. Right, and, um, right. We've brought in people from, you know, either entrepreneurs who serve the association community, people like you, or um, people who just didn't even know what an association was, <laughs> who've done some cool stuff with developing their businesses or lines of thinking. And having brought all these people together just gives us that fresh perspective we've been looking for. I love it. You know, um, and I think that it's wonderful the way that you're able to provide um, an in-person meeting. So we always know that we want to meet in person if we can, but obviously like things like today, if you're in the DC area, you know that if you're detained even 15 minutes, you may not end up making it to that event that you want to go to. Um, you offer also a way for, for people to participate online so that it doesn't even have to be um, someone that lives within the DC metro area. It can be people all over who can participate in these events. Can you talk to me a little bit about um, the decision making that went into that? And and I'm sure there was some back and forth, like, should we do it? Should we not? Because that, that adds a layer of complexity to it. Yeah, I wish I could say it was a super strategic process, Kiki, and sound impressive, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, tell the truth, you guys. <laughs> it's way sure. more interesting. Yeah, at our very first meeting, we just had like a conference line, an audio line open because, you know, uh, we in this DC area believe that we are the association community and we often forget that um, there are so many fabulous colleagues who are not in this area and who really want to be a part of these conversations. So started out by just allowing them to listen in and occasionally talk. And then I think our second meeting, um, it was towards the end of March, there was a snow day and in this area, probably half an inch. And I was like, should we cancel? Um, and then said no. So we um, we immediately moved to like a go to meeting kind of platform. And we we had that completely virtual and it worked really well. Felt like we had a ton more interaction by being online than we did by just being in the room. So then it became a no-brainer that we would have a hybrid meeting because it allowed more people to attend. And that dynamic of having some people sit face to face and be, really being able to bridge the conversation with those who are joining us online, um, we eventually switched up to Zoom. Association Success was a great partner. They allowed us to use the Zoom platform. And now we have our own, but... Um, I think the dynamic works really well. And, you know, people like to weigh in different ways. There are some people who like to speak out, others who'd rather sort of chat in mm -hmm. um, their thoughts, and this just balances all of them. And I have gotten to know that there is a wonderful, huge association community outside of the DC area. So that's yeah. Cool. So how do you come up with the topics that are going to come up and how far ahead are you are you planning? Because I know that for association chat, that's a question that I get pretty regularly is, is what goes into that? And I've done all kinds of different things, approaches over the years. And a lot of times it's like, well, I've got like five people who want to be on at the exact same time and zero for this one week. So tell me what your approach has been. How how are you figuring out? Because there's a lot that you can cover when it comes to entrepreneurship and associations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I think for right now, I've got a tentative plan for topics we meet on a monthly basis. And um, that's just because 
uh, uh, some of the topics of, you know, uh, if I'm facing a challenge or I'm thinking about something, it, um, it sparks a train of thought. And then I sort of check in with other people to see if it's a challenge that is common enough that we can come together around it. Um, I also get a ton mm-hmm. of input from people who are participating in the group. Um, either we'll hang out after we finish one of these meetings and people will be like, hey, we should talk about this, that, and the other. Or um, when people are signing up for a meeting, they'll provide their ideas. And I uh, tend to look uh, look a lot at the feedback, at the input that we get. Uh, people come up with some really interesting ideas. Sometimes they even propose people who can weigh in. But as you get to know people, it's, it's sort of like viral. And it's like, hey, we need to. Here's the next topic coming up. It's almost like you start talking about something and you say, gosh, like we could go on forever about that. We just scratch the surface and yeah. that becomes the topic for your next meeting. Yeah. So talk to me about uh, today's meeting because it's really, it's going to be focused on events and associations and applying the entrepreneurial lens. Um, tell me, tell me more. I'm going to be a part of it, but for mm-hmm. those who aren't going to actually be able to be there or attend live, uh, what is, what should they know about it? Um, so we, I'm very excited about having a conversation today about transforming association meetings. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to start out by saying, um, you know, for most of us in associations, meetings are our are life. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they are bread and butter and they are a key way of engaging with members. They just kind of consume us in many ways. In, a, in many good ways, but we sort of want to stop and ask the question about, is that really fundamental to our existence as associations? What happens if we had no meeting? What if, you know, we took away that big trade show? What if we took away something? Is yeah. there something else? Is there, are there other ways in which we can reach our revenue and our member engagement goals without uh, expending effort at that level? So just questions we want to ask. The answer may be yes, maybe no. You're curious to find out. And assuming that meetings still occupy a very important role in the life of associations, we then want to get into what should the experience be like before, mm-hmm. during, and after a meeting. Um, yeah. And we just really want to think it's not just about, hey, you know, how can I make my badging process better? Or um, are there tips for live streaming a meeting? It's not at the tactical level, but we really want to talk about how can we make this a lasting experience? How can we make it a great experience that lasts beyond the three days of an event, right? Like how do you make it memorable? Um, how do you increase the stickiness of members? And yeah. how do you deliver value to everyone from your sponsors to your attendees to even your members who can't come to the meeting? So we just, um, we'll do as much as we can in two hours. <laughs> so we're looking forward to the back and forth. Oh, so, so anyone who's like listening to this live now and you hadn't signed up today, obviously this is something that if you still can do attend because it sounds like it's really important. And I can't think of an association that that discussion wouldn't have merit mm-hmm. in, in attending. So, um, yeah, it's 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 kind of stunning when you think about how fast time flies after you create something. And so do you ever look at at all of the discussions you've had, the people you've met and think, wow, I mean, it's gone by in like what, a year and a half, a, a year. And and uh, I can't believe, I don't know. I, I ask this question because I feel like that sometimes, like look at all these discussions. Are there any that, that stick out for you? Oh, I wanna say all of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple, jump to mind one was a great discussion we had um i learned so much but we brought in an entrepreneur and um, we discussed lean startup Mm -hmm. and applying uh, the concepts of lean startup to associations um i thought that was phenomenal it was just such a different way of thinking um about like you know really being nimble and flexible and um being open to experimenting you know not having to invest tens of thousands or go like the whole way without really testing your market without. So I thought that was great. And people brought like scenarios and they said, look, this is what I'm going through in my association. And Peter Dudka, the entrepreneur who was leading the conversation actually um, showed us how he would take lean startup principles and apply them to these scenarios. So that that's one of my favorites. Um, Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and we also had a fabulous session. I mean, they were all good. Uh, we had a bunch of great speakers, like I said. Um, I think we had one recently a couple of months ago on how are we listening to members and how to leverage data and technology to really increase member engagement. And um, again, we had some great speakers. The dialogue was just so, so good there. It started out as a conversation about what kind of data should you look at? What metrics should you be you know, watching? And um, ultimately, like one of our participants um, said it so well, he's like, it all comes down to rolling in the mud with our members. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought that was just so awesome. That was such a perfect way of describing it. Um, yeah. So uh, I love that. Yeah, those are just some of my favorites. And we've had so many more. I, um, I could list them all. But I will say, um, again, I mentioned Association Success. Um, mm -hmm. It was very supportive. We, we've published some of the takeaways from our past conversations on um, association success. So that would be a good place to sort of get a flavor of some of the things we've talked about in the past. I love that. Michael Butera says, what makes ACE work so well is its fluency, freshness, and openness. People are welcomed and all ideas are considered. And so is that something that have you and the group of people, supporters, have you sat down and um, really figured out, you know, who are we? What are we about? Um, I did go to the website to see that there is, I mean, there's definitely a sort of a mission statement and, you know, what is ACE all about? But could you maybe share uh, with all of us, you know, the process that went into that, the thinking that went into that? Um, because it certainly does look like it's intentional. Um, well, a lot of it has just evolved organically. And I want to say thank you, Michael, for that comment. Michael was actually one of the speakers at our very, very first ACE meeting, where we started out by defining barriers to entrepreneurship. And um, some of the things he said then still resonate with me. So he did a great job helping us define those barriers along with some other speakers. And um, yeah, I think we've... Um, Many of us have been asking that question. Um, it is a forum for dialogue, so we've enjoyed having the conversations. But um, I think we are trying to be more intentional about what are we doing with everything we talk about and learn at ACE. We are trying to be more hands-on problem solvers. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we've sort of tried to make that shift in recent months. We um, recently had um, is was um, in a guards jargon with the Healthcare Financial Management Association um, is thinking about launching a problem solving forum for associations. And he invited ACE to chat with him um, to, to look at what we could do together. So uh, that was exciting because it's like, how do we, you know, we, we talk about these challenges, what are our greatest ones, then how do we take them and how do we do something about it, right? Like yeah. how do we apply a methodology, in this case, it was design thinking. How do we actually apply that to a problem we all face? And hey, is there like, can we come to collaborate from a solution and take it away to apply it back at work? Um, so um, it happens in bits and pieces, but we're trying to be a little bit more organized and intentional about that. Um, and to me, that is huge because I know I can give so much more at work <laughs> as a result of that process. And I would hope it's the same for other people anecdotally or heard that it is. I would I would imagine that it is. I mean, I think that the the I don't know, just the the sheer coming together and being able to talk over different ideas and concepts and really work them through so that it's not like um I think a lot of people feel nervous about maybe necessarily focusing just on their own, but when they're seeing problems solved in front of them. Mm -hmm. And they're discussing with other people about how other organizations have solved the, solved those problems. This is something that, on an ongoing basis, you're you're constantly able to teach and apply and learn, and everybody learning from each other. So, you know, it would seem like you couldn't help but benefit from being a part of something like that. Absolutely, yeah. And it's the sheer efficiency. Um, you know, I believe that in associations we all have tremendous passion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I can yeah. say that's very true of my association. We love what we do. We love our members. We love what we are helping them accomplish. But if we want to help our members be successful, we've got to be forward thinking ourselves. 
And um, <laughs> we also need to be efficient about the way we function. One of the things I've heard a lot from this group is the biggest challenge is how do we let something go? <laughs> you know, associations are very good at adding things on at taking more on and um, people will go to any lens to get things done. But how can we do it more efficiently so that we can provide more value to our members? And I think if you come together as a community and talk to each other, uh, there's so greater efficiencies. There is no need for everyone to reinvent the wheel or for you to have to fail starting from scratch. You can sort of feed off of each other and that's energizing and it makes life easier, right? Yeah, absolutely. So how are you, um, I guess, looking for inspiration or getting inspired for different topics? What's inspiring you now in the entrepreneurship association field? Um, lots of stuff. I guess it's thinking about, um, I think that no matter what topic we discuss, there's so much conversation around all of the fabulous data and technology that we have access to and how we can leverage that to provide a better experience and to provide better value. Um, I think member engagement and in this very crowded world um, where there's so much noise, how do we get our members to pay attention to us is a big uh, thing. I think increasingly as a group of associations, we um, we all acknowledge that we have competition and that competition comes not just from another association in our space. Uh, sometimes there's not even another association in our space, but it comes from just what technology makes possible. You know, people yeah. can get together, form their communities. You can form a community on LinkedIn, right? Like why do you need associations? So. Um, in everything that we do, we face competition. We often face competition from for-profit sources. So it's how can we flex and how can we strengthen ourselves as associations to be able to stand up to that kind of competition and leverage the huge credibility we have in the eyes of our members as nonprofits and yeah. how we make the most of it. So those are some of the things we, uh, those are recurring themes I tend to hear at like all, uh, all of our meetings. I mean, I have to say that I, when I went to look at your LinkedIn profile, which I do, I, you know, I, I do this for every guest, you know, I go and I look, Oops, okay. what, can, what can I find that's out there? And, you know, the passion that you have for this topic and how you feel like, you know, you can honestly help associations. Every person who's looking at these topics can really help their associations to move forward and to, to be those leaders in every industry and profession um, by going outside and, and pulling from these different sources, these different ideas, the entrepreneurial mindset and applying it, it really shines through. And what I really liked about everybody who's out there, go check out me. It, can, can they connect with you? Go check out Mina's LinkedIn profile because she actually talks about um, what makes her different? What makes her tick? And how she thinks about these different concepts. Um, and I really liked how you approach things by asking a question. And you said, uh, what was it? You you are a strategic thinker and always start with the question, so what? <laughs> but I like it because um, another thing that you mentioned is talking about unleashing the potential in others as well, right? You're interested in the creativity and joy in others as well. And I think that um, that definitely shines through in what's happening with the group. And so I just want to say, good job, you know, and like, I think that I think that you're doing an amazing job. What this is kind of an, a, pers a personal question. What, where does this passion come from for you? You know, you obviously are already deeply interested in this beyond this conversation that maybe started the the idea of the group um, on Collaborate. Where does the passion for entrepreneurship and innovation come from for you? I wish I had a profound answer because I've <laughs> been <laughs> before. But um, I would say it comes from my background as um, as a writer. I love to write. Um, writing is was my entry into the association world, into what I do for work. Um, and um, when you are a writer and when you are sort of trying to get to the bottom of things, 
of trying to put something together with that, whether that be a persuasive email or, um, you know, a feature article or whatever it might be, you tend to be, it's easy to connect the dots. You know, you can bring people from different sides together. You can have those really insightful conversations and that helps you really see the potential for what we can be, the greater good that we can do if we come together. So I've always been, um, my background in writing helped me be side of that systems thinker and a dot connector really. And that I think is what led to um, thinking about you know, entrepreneurship. Um, also, I'm in communications. We um, tend to be creative, so yeah. we always tend to think outside the box, and um, that makes you ask more questions. So um, Start With Why is definitely one of my favorite themes. I have a fabulous team at work, and we all, um, at Public Power, we all feed off of each other really well. And um, I, um, I think we all talk about this philosophy of, we need to start with why to the extent that times when I forget it and I'm just in doing mode, everybody on my team will come back to me and say, um, why? <laughs> why are you doing this? Yeah. Remind us why? And I'm like, oops, okay, let's start again. So yeah, I think um, it, it really helps you be a good influence on other people and um, helps everybody think about the why. So I know that we are coming, you've got an event that is about to happen that I'm going to tune into too at three, but, um, but one last question, and that is where do you see things going with the group? I mean, what would you like to have happen as things move along? Because certainly there is such a great opportunity for continuing the, the discussion, certainly, but when you have people who are engaged, you know, what would you like to see happen? Um, I would like to continue to meet awesome people, would like great minds to come together. And um, as we talked about before, I would like to really see this group be a resource for solving challenges that m multiple associations face. Um, how, do we, um, how do we identify what the challenges are and how can we um, find how can we co-create shared solutions that we can all use? Um, and so I would like to see that become something concrete and would like to like it to continue to be the great networking platform that it's been definitely for me. You know, um, I would not have met all the awesome people that I've met over the last year <laughs> if not for doing this. So um, would definitely like to see it be a great resource for association executives who like to think outside the box and who are willing to come together to create solutions. Well, I, I, for one, am very impressed by everything that you've done. And I only want to get more involved with, with the group, with the meetings. And I want to thank you because for this beautiful association community, listen, anybody who might be watching this on one of the channels who, who they don't maybe understand that there's an association for everything. They don't maybe understand that, um, that the association industry Listen, these organizations are leading, they're at the forefront of every industry, every profession, every science that's out there. And when we are able to come together as leaders for our associations and really get innovative and work together and collaborate and, and push forward, amazing things can happen. We can change the world. And so Mina, thank you so much for the work that you're doing um, with ACE and with everything. I'm just so happy that you talked with me and I definitely want to schedule another time to do an association chat in person. We have to meet in person. Absolutely. And um, you have a whole uh, group of great people to hear from other than me. So we would love to have you, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, and really we would invite everyone that's like-minded to come join our group. It's it's a very informal group. I don't even think of it as an association. <laughs> like-minded people. So we'd love to have more people join our future conversations or the one starting 30 minutes from now. I know. I've got to let you go quickly. Where can people find you online? Uh, LinkedIn would be best. Okay. And where can people find out information about the group? Um, so we have a skeleton website <laughs> at the beginnings of one. Um, it's called ACE, A-C-E, aceassociations.com, dot .org works too, I guess. So okay. um, that's where we have um, information about the next meeting coming up. And um, we 
we, we will populate it better, but that's one good way to connect and find out more. I love it. There's Thank also you. a registration link to today's meeting and the Zoom info, and you can get it off of there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I'll try to put some of the links in the comments below where this is posted. Mina, I know you've got to go, so I'll let you go and go get ready for your big event. And for everyone else, thanks for tuning in today. I know this is a little bit different format than what we usually have, but um, I hope you found value in it. And keep asking questions to learn every day. As Joseph Campbell once said, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Kiki. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, thanks for listening to Association Chat produced by Kiki Letalien. For more information on Association Chat, go to associationchat.com.